Hello everyone, today we're going to be learning how to convert these Chaos Space Marine Chaos Warrior models. Um, the actual conversion itself, you're going to need three main bits that you're going to have to worry about. The chest piece from the Warriors, the Astartes, legs, it's the boots that you want. And the cape. Um, you can see on the boots there's quite a defined line between what you want and what you don't want. Um, you don't want the boots, obviously, on the Chaos Warrior because unless you're doing Crusade pattern armor, in which case you could just leave the Chaos Warrior as it is, I don't really suggest you leave the boots on because it does tend to jar people a bit, even if you do put the pauldrons on. Um, unwittingly, Games Workshop have made actually a very, very good uh, bit of conversion material with these kits because the actual cape itself has uh, rounded shoulders just like the Astartes pauldrons and all you really have to do is just go in there with the clippers and your glue and a bit of green stuff that's really all you need for this conversion it's quite messy and it's quite time consuming it takes about 15 minutes to convert one of these uh, but what I do is I cut all the boots and stuff up first and then sort of go straight into it because once the boots are cut off it's pretty easy. Uh, you're looking for this diagonal line uh, from where the shoulders are, just don't be uh, afraid, just snap it off. You want a nice slant for the pauldrons to go on because that's where the green stuff will be applied. And go ahead and do it on the other side as well. Remember if you do these in batches and you're going to cut the boots up, keep them all in pairs. In fact, it's best to leave the Astartes boots till last. And if you compare these two models, uh, you can see exactly where the pauldrons go. That one actually has Terminator pauldrons on, but we're going to be putting regular pauldrons on because it works with both. Uh, the Terminator ones are easier to put on, but they are very expensive. <laughs> and the next stage of it is the actual body piece. This is the major conversion work. You need the, uh, the boots cutting off that. You also need to trim the fur just a little bit because as you can see the pauldrons don't fit on if you don't cut the fur off. Uh, yeah. So you can see the chainmail on that. We don't want to touch the chainmail and we don't want to touch the kneecaps. We're also going to have to trim that fur later. Um, the best way to do this is to actually turn the model round and look for the line where the boots start because that's the weakest point. The first bit of the conversion, you're going to have to remove the feet, which is done pretty damn easily. Just don't be shy. Go in there and start butchering it. But just the only thing you've got to be careful of is that knee pad and the chainmail. That's all you have to be careful of. Now go to the back of the model, clip the raised bit of the boot off. The reason that you're doing this is because the less plastic there is behind it, the less chance you'll have of cutting into the, uh, the, the chainmail once you do it. Now, that can actually be fixed, but I'll teach you how to do that in a minute. Uh, take it and just find the line between the kneecap and the boot and make a really really deep cut. Don't mind if things go wild, don't mind if things stretch because you can just put your line against the chainmail. Make sure you line the flat bit of the clippers up against the chainmail and snip it off. As I say don't be shy and try and find the back of the boot and you've got a perfect square. Now you're going to have to keep mm, clearing just that little square out because that's where the green stuff is going to go. You don't want too much of it cut out because the green stuff actually has to sort of pool and stay and that's what's going to hold this model together. Um, eventually what we'll do is we'll, once the uh, green stuff has dried on the model, we'll break every single joint we've made and the green stuff will have retained the shape of what's inside the joint and then you can just super glue that back together and it'll be strong as anything you'll, you know, just you'll put together in Games Workshop. Now as you can see here there's two perfect squares, the chain mail's unhurt, the knee pad's unhurt. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning out the inside so we don't get loads of nasty plastic bits stuck in the green stuff and because that could make it weak. Uh, so we've got those two bits there, that's where the green stuff is going to go. And we'll take the cake that we've cut, put a bit of glue on it and glue the two pieces together. But first, we're just going to trim these little bits off. You literally need to look at how little there is in there. Look at how little there is. That's all you need to cut. If you cut more than that, the fur will look wrong. But if you cut any less than that, the Astartes pauldrons won't go on. So just be careful. 
but that's literally all you need to do. This is the hard bit of the conversion over. Seriously, this is the hard bit of the conversion over. Everything else is just posing. Slip these two pieces back in, as you can see, the fur actually goes over what would be the pauldrons really, really nicely, and it covers up the fact that you've cut them. The pauldrons will also cover that fact up. Uh, this is a um, power fist, the Chaos Marine power fist that I've just put on. Oh no, no it's not, it's uh, that's a boot, yes. Just put a little bit of green stuff on the boot, and you can slip that in. And that will just press into the crevasse you've made. The chainmail has a habit of just hanging down between the Astartes boots and it makes them really, really easy to pose. It, pose. it gives you a guide. Just press the boot up against them and the boot will just fit into the space between the chainmail and the cape. Put a little bit more green stuff on the other foot and do the same thing with the other side. And it, these things literally will just nestle in and you'll notice that there is a little bit of excess around it. We're going to clean that up now. Because while it's soft and while it's malleable, it's the best time to uh, just take one of these bases and a little bit of glue on the feet, wipe off the excess. and then put it on the base. Now the base you have to just, don't force it but pressure it on because everything about this, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the green stuff to set in a believable pose with legs that were never made for this model. This will make the model, th these will make the marines true scale because obviously the calves are now elongated to the size of the thighs. But of course, space marine armor is uh, wrongly proportioned anyway, so it's all right. The pauldrons fit really nicely onto these little, cut off areas, what you'll need is a big blob of green stuff uh, inside the pauldron, probably about that much, just between your fingers, put it inside the pauldron and then what you want to do is you want to not let it go to the bottom of the pauldron because if you press it against the shoulder and then the green stuff pops out you'll have a great big blob of green stuff there it'll be hard to move so make sure it's smooth at the bottom and that will just fit right on the shoulder there and it'll be nice and sticky it's a shame because in this conversion you take away the uh, fur at the back because the the Astartes backpack will be stuck on there and uh, the only fur that you see is actually around the collar, which is really, really nice, don't get me wrong, but it's only on the um, the command sprue where you actually get a cape with fur all down the back rather than just on the shoulder. This is one of the pauldrons. Just move the, whatever you're using to move the green stuff, just move it away from the bottom and smooth it out like this. Just make sure there's no green stuff sticking to the bottom of it, because if you do, obviously it'll pop out and it won't be very nice. And remember, it's the centre of the green stuff that's going to make the contact. And remember, don't just leave your models like this, because the green stuff, it, it has a mild adhesive in it, but it's nothing massively powerful, and your models will just break in your hands if you leave them. So remember, purposefully, when the model is dry in about tomorrow, give it 24 hours to completely and utterly set. Green stuff is usually hard in about two hours, but I would say give it to the next day before you break it. Really, really stiff, really, really rubbery. Put a layer of super glue on it and then rejoin it perfectly to the flat surface, the flat surface, because that's where super glue works best going to work up some more green stuff now because we're going to put on the Astartes uh, head and the backpack and also the weapons. Now this loadout we're going to do as a captain uh, of the Plague Marine. So 
this, these two holes here, a lot of people will, will stop at this point and go, well, we can't put the whole arm on. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the line where the glove is and just cut. Because it's only the glove that comes out of this cloak. It's like he's got his, uh, his bicep under the cloak. Uh, if you actually look at the Chaos Warrior weapons, you can only see the gloves and absolutely none of the arm. So we're only, uh, you know, replicating that. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make um, a model with holding a bolt gun in both of his hands. The only reason I'm showing you that is because this is actually harder. Because the positioning has to be done really well uh, for it to look like the model is in motion. Uh, whereas the models with the bolters, it's the exact same procedure. You cut it off at the elbow, and then put a blob of green stuff in the end, put it in both of those holes. Those holes are the guides of where the arm is supposed to go. Um, what we're doing here is just taking the excess green stuff off. It's still the same procedure if you've got something in two hands. And everyone knows how to put the bolters on the hand, you know, rest it on top of the hand where the, butt, where the uh, trigger is, and then put the actual butt, uh, the... Um, you know, the casing of the gun in the other hand. Uh, what you can do here is you can actually score in the Astartes sort of like uh, casing that they have around their joints. Just score it in in little lines with a toothpick or a, or a, or a, or a pin or anything you're using. It just has to be very, very thin um, because at this stage the green stuff is very fine. This is uh, a power fist. going to be using. Uh, remember, always cut it off at the elbow. Apply a blob of green stuff. You might need you might need a fair bit of green stuff for this because you actually have to fill that hole. The reason you have to fill it is because you're going to break it later. You're going to break it, then you're going to glue it because the green stuff alone won't hold it. And then you just put that into the slot. Just like And you can see how much green stuff is there, it's quite a bit. And this particular claw has a habit of wherever you position it, in, in what, you can actually face it going up, face it going down to the side, uh, you can have him holding it out a little bit, but whatever happens to it, there's always these little lines of green stuff that you've got to correct. You've just got to put the Astartes style uh, piping in there. And once you do that, Remember, once this model's sprayed black, there won't be any areas of green, there won't be any areas where they'll, it, it's really, really obvious that you've uh, applied green stuff. Uh, we're going to be using the um, Plague Champion head that you get in the Space Marine kit on this. One horn, three eyes, which look really, really nice with the, uh, with the bolt gun being holed out. So that's him there. The only thing missing is the backpack. And the backpack is the easiest thing to put on. Um, what you've just got to make sure that you do, you've got to build up the green stuff on the backpack into a little pyramid. And you've also got to fill those two holes, because as I say, you've got to break it again and then glue it. So fill the two holes so you get a mould where the green stuff will actually take the shape of those two depressions. And then when you break both sides, because remember there's a side in contact with the actual Astartes backpack, there's a side in contact with all that fur at the back. Now the fur is really really rough and textured so the green stuff will sink into that and it'll form a really really nice bond. Uh, but don't be fooled by it. Keep still break it. Still apply glue because you're not going to hurt the model and it just makes it even stiffer and sturdier. Um, so just apply that little mount into the back and make sure that the rim of the backpack comes up over the head don't make it too high and definitely don't make it too low. And that's about finished, that's about all we can do. You've just got to make sure you keep pressing it and pressing it and pressing it until there's absolutely no way anything, uh, there's any air bubbles in there between the fur because that will mean the model will snap apart after you've glued it even. Um, and that is one converted cloak to start compare it with the other one, it's uh, the exact same size. They're about 
a head and half a shoulder taller than normal marines, normal guardsmen, normal Tau, so they will look really, really nice on the field. They're not big enough to decrease any size bonus, so uh, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.